I count on one thing The same God that never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God who's never late Is working all things out You're working all things out It is great to be with all of you this morning on this sixth Sunday after Pentecost. Um, this morning, we are going to be looking at the gospel lesson from uh, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11. It is what should be a fairly familiar text to you. And while our 40 day challenge ends officially tomorrow, um, and technically last Sunday was the last Sunday. Of the sermon series, I couldn't help myself, so we're doing it again this week. Um, so, it, and you'll you'll see why. You'll see why. You know, everything that you need to follow along in worship, you can do so with a bulletin if you grabbed it. If not, that's okay. Uh, everything will be printed for you on the worship screens this morning as well. 
That is it for our pre-service announcements. Let us take a moment to rise and welcome those that we are worshiping with this morning. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Good morning, peace of Christ. Doing well, how about yourself? Good. Good morning, peace of Christ. Good morning, peace of Christ. Good morning. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you may have a seat for our opening hymn, Hark the Glad Sound. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With the Apostle Paul, today we admit, I do not understand my own actions. At the invitation of God our Savior, let us bring our weariness and burdens to him, that his forgiveness may rescue us and restore to us the joy of his salvation. For if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and, un and cannot free ourselves, even though we rejoice at the joy of Christmas Daily our sins of thought, word, and deed cause us grief. We have forgotten you, even when we needed you the most. Our love for our neighbors has faded. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, we come at his invitation, seeking the true rest of the forgiveness of our sins. Amen. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you all. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, your mercy attends us all our days. Be our strength and support amid the wearisome changes of this world. And at life's end, grant us your promised rest and the full joys of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the word. Our Old Testament lesson for this morning comes from the prophet Zechariah chapter 9, beginning at verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you righteous, and having salvation is he, humble, and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, on the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson comes from Paul's letter to the church in Rome, chapter 7, beginning at verse 14. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God 
in my inner being. But I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. O oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. For from him and through him and to him are all things. Alleluia. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son reveals or chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. Together we join our voices as we boldly confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, and all of the children that are present with us are invited forward for a brief message for you guys. Good morning. Oh, you guys can do better than that. Good morning. good morning. All right. It is good to be with all of you this morning. Can any of you tell me what a burden is? Do you know what a burden is? Hmm. You don't know what a burden is. A burden is something that weighs heavy upon you. It's something that's maybe bothering you. Right? It's something that you're struggling with. So a burden might be if you are asked by mom and dad to do something and you really don't want to do it. Maybe that's weighing heavy on you. Right? Or maybe your brother or your sister is not being very kind and that burden is weighing on you. Well, to help you guys understand what burden is, I need someone who is very strong that can help me. Who wants to help me that's very strong? You want to give it a shot? All right. Stand up, would you? So burdens are things that weigh us down. They are heavy. Okay? And so I brought with me something to represent burdens. What is this? A rock. Okay? And so we'll say that this burden is getting up and going back to school. So can you hold that for me? Is that heavy? It's not too heavy, okay? 
You can carry, could you carry that around for all day if you had to? You probably could, okay? All right, how about this one? We'll say that this burden is, hmm, this burden is maybe someone, maybe one of your friends is not being very kind to you. Is that one heavy? A little bit, okay. Do you think that you could carry around both of those for most of the day? Okay. This one? All right, we'll do this one. Here's another one. We'll say that this burden is um, having to do chores at home. Can you carry that one for me too? How's that? Not that heavy? Okay, well, that's fine. I have, I have more. Um, we'll say that this burden is the burden that your parents have to make sure that you are taken care of. Okay, how's that? A little bit heavy? Can you, can, do you think you can hold some more burdens? Yeah, okay. Um, this one, we'll say, is your parents having to pay the bills. Okay? And this one, we'll say that this one is um, your parents have to go to work. Right? How's that? A little bit heavy? Can you still hold on to it or do you need me to take them off? She can still hold on to them. All right. This burden is grandma is sick. So I'm going to put this one right here. And then we've got uh, these two right here. Um, we'll say that this one is um, the fact that you have to help out your neighbor who is um, not able to do things around the house. And so that's something else that you have to do. How's that? Too heavy or are you doing okay? Too heavy? Not too heavy? She says no, not too heavy. Okay. Um, we'll say that this burden, is, um, this burden is all of the stuff that you have to get done in a day. How's that? Not too heavy? Man, she's good. Well, here's some more burdens for you. How are you doing? It's too heavy? So when life gives you too many burdens and it becomes too heavy, guess what? You can hold these all day and you can try and carry these around. And if you had to carry that around all day, what would happen? They would all fall, right? You would be so tired, you'd be so exhausted, they would all fall over the place. But if you go to Jesus and you say, Jesus, I can't carry this anymore. Jesus is going to go like this. And he's going to say, I've got them. And Jesus is going to take all of these burdens, and he's going to carry them for you. Okay? So this is a great... Thank you so much, by the way. That was awesome. Uh, we carry burdens all the time, and those burdens, they get heavy. And the more burdens that we have, the heavier they are. And we, ha and we think, I've got to carry these all day, every day by myself. But you don't have to. You can say, Jesus, I need help. I need you to carry this for me. And Jesus is going to come to you and he's going to say, I love you and I forgive you. And let me take all of those away from you. I've got this. I've got this. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to remember that if you're having a hard time, if something's really bothering you, just say, hey, Jesus, I need your help. I need you to take this away from me. And he will come and give you help. Okay, let's hold our hands and bow our heads. Dear Father, we are thankful that when we struggle under the load of life's burdens, that you are there to help us carry the load. Thank you for sending Jesus, who forgives us, who loves us, and who has died for us. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys can head back with moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas. Thank you so much for coming up. And we will continue our time of worship with our sermon hymn, When Peace Like a River.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace, and we know, Lord, that you have taken away our sin, not in part, but in whole. And that sin has indeed been nailed to the cross of Jesus Christ, and we no longer bear it. And so we give you thanks. We give you praise from the very depths of our being down into our soul, Lord. We thank you for the rest that you provide, for the opportunity to gather with the body of Christ and receive the gifts that you so freely give, gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation. Lord, help us go forward in our lives. Though we are brought down by burden and anxiety, may we go forward with the remembrance that with Jesus, all things are possible. With Jesus, our life of anxiety and burden, that those things are taken away. They are removed, and we are given rest. We pray all these things in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. So these past 40 days, we have been in this being challenge. If you've been here at all, you have hopefully been hearing about the being challenge. And during this, these last 40 days, it ends tomorrow officially, um, but over these last 40 days, we have sought to be with Jesus that we might be more like Jesus. And over the last 40 days, we have sought to ad adopt, if you will, these habits of Jesus that we see in the scriptures. And so things like committing to our community or studying scripture, prioritizing prayer, seeking solitude. And, and this week, as we wrap this up, we are, have been looking at choosing church. While the 40-day challenge does end tomorrow, technically, last Sunday, as I said, was the conclusion of our sermon series on the Being Challenge. I was preparing for uh, this morning, and I read all of the lessons, and I finished reading the gospel, and I couldn't help myself. I didn't plan this at all. Um, I just chose the Sunday when we were going to start this, and it just so happened to end tomorrow, and so this is the last Sunday in the 40 days, and I did not choose these readings. These are the assigned lectionary readings for this morning. So this is just, maybe you would call it a coincidence. I would like to call it a God remaining anonymous, okay? Uh, but it is appropriate because it keeps up with this theme of being. And so I want you to listen to these red letter words one more time. You've heard it all morning. It's been in the liturgy. You heard me read it a few moments ago, but it's good for us to hear these words again. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Wash the dishes. Take out the trash. Feed the dog. Clean the house, finish homework, go to work, pick up her daughter. Emily had more to do in life than there were hours in the day. Anyone ever feel like that? Oh, yeah. Your schedule is so packed full, there's just not enough time in the day. Well, this was Emily's life. Her financial situation, it weighed heavily down upon her. She was already working two part-time jobs because she couldn't find full-time employment. She was burdened and struggled with answering questions like, how was this month she going to pay for the light bill, the rent, and at the same time have enough money to feed her and her daughter? Maybe you've had those questions running through your mind. Maybe you've been burdened by such things. 
The load of it all was crushing for Emily. She was a young single mom. There was little time for her to sleep. After a 19-hour day of running around, worrying and working, day after day after day, six days a week, she just caught a moment of silence. But even in that silence, her mind was filled with the chaos and the worry and the burden of life. Just before she gets ready to go to bed, Emily tiptoes to the bedroom of her infant daughter, and she opens up her door, and she peers in at her daughter who's laying there in the crib. Moms and dads, I know everyone's done this, right? And they just look so cute and so innocent. And there they are, laying there without a care in the world. And there for Emily was her little daughter, fast asleep in the crib. And she did not feel any of the pressures that her mother felt. She didn't understand what was happening. She was innocent to it all. She did not know what tomorrow held. She didn't know the troubles that her mother was facing, the worries that came with tomorrow. She just knew that her mommy would take care of her. But Emily knew what tomorrow held. She knew what was in store. She was anxious about the water getting shut off. She had heard from her babysitter who watched her daughter for six days that she might be going back to work and she was going to be losing her, babies, her babysitter. The thought of tomorrow's challenges as she stood there in her daughter's doorway peering upon her daughter brought her to tears. And she began pondering, when was there going to be relief? When was there going to be a break? When would she get some rest? Brothers and sisters, our bodies need rest. It is a simple fact. When we are tired, we need to rest. If you have ever gone and gone and gone, kind of like the Energizer Bunny, there is going to be a point when you are going to sit down on the couch, lay down in the bed, and you think that you're just taking a five-minute siesta, and three hours pass by. Because you are that tired, your body needs rest. Rest gives our bodies the required period to rejuvenate, to recharge, to rebuild ourselves, to get refocused so that we can keep on doing the things that we know need to be done. In the world today, many of us need more rest. We need to set time aside in our busy schedules to just be. And not to be alone, we talked about that a couple weeks ago, but to be with Jesus. But we, we struggle with that in this country. Studies have shown that the average American doesn't get nearly enough sleep for what their body requires to function at optimal or even at peak performances. More than one-third of all Americans get less than seven hours of sleep a night. Who is that in here? That is me. Anyone else? Less than seven hours of sleep. All right. You are part of the one-third of Americans. But it's not just physical rest that we are lacking. There is more than that. It's not just sleeping. 31% of Americans experience some type of anxiety disorder at some point in their life. 31%. Another study shows that 85% of what people worry about, it never happens. We spend 85% of our time worrying about things that don't happen. But then on the other hand, on the other hand of that very same coin, another survey shows that 60% of people were concerned about paying for their everyday expenses. Grocery bill, light bill, rent, mortgage, these kinds of things. It's in the midst of this chaos and this mess and this anxiety and stress that Jesus comes and he says, when you are labored, when you are heavy laden, when things are pressing down upon you, then come to me. Come to me for I am the source of rest. Now, for the Jews who would have heard this, this would have been a big deal. Shabbat. Sabbath, okay? For the Jew, Sabbath was found in Torah. It was the law. That is where they found rest. The law was what 
Yahweh gave to his people as a guide so that they would not be led astray, so that they would not be led off the path. The law was how God revealed himself to his people. And it was how the people had access to God. It was through Moses, their mediator. But here... Jesus says that the Father is now revealed and that all things have been handed over by the Father to Jesus. Jesus comes and says that the wise and those who, quote, understand, those who thought they were in the kingdom of God, guess what? They do not receive. On the other hand, our text says little children or a better translation would be really be little ones because it's not talking specifically about children. Rather, it is those people who bring absolutely nothing to the table. Nothing. These are the least likely to understand. They are the weak. They are those who are not wise or rich or powerful. They have nothing. Brothers and sisters, the ones not expected to receive the kingdom are the very same people who receive it because they are completely, totally, 100% reliant on the Father. They bring nothing with them. What does the hymn say? Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to the cross I cling. Look back to the text. Jesus says, no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. You do not choose to be in the kingdom of God. You do not choose to know the Father. These things have been revealed, they have been given to you, they are exposed by Jesus Christ. You and I are in the kingdom of God, not by our own power or strength, Not because we are a part of the religious crowd, not because we are in the church, not because we are elite, but because you have been chosen. The gospel has been revealed to you through Jesus Christ. And it's Jesus who comes and offers you complete, total Sabbath rest. So come. Come, all of you who are weary. Come, all of you who are burdened in mind and body and soul. Come, those of you who are anxious. Come, those of you who are being spiritually attacked. Come, those of you who are wearied by bills and by the burdens of everyday life. Come, those of you who are terrified by your sinfulness. Come, all of you who have failed To keep the law of God. Because Jesus is here. He's here. As we commit to our community. He's here as we study the scriptures. He's here as we prioritize prayer. He's here as we seek solitude. He's here when we choose church. Jesus will give you rest. As Emily gazed upon her daughter with the weight of the world pressing down upon her shoulders, with her mind filled with the troubles of tomorrow and everything that came with it, she stopped short in her train of thought. She began to ask herself this question, didn't she have a father who cared for her? And as that thought ran through her mind, suddenly the burden on her face turned into a brilliant smile. And the weight fell from her shoulders. And she walked into her daughter's room and she curled up in the chair that was next to her daughter's crib. And she knew that she could rest. Even without the answers for tomorrow, she could rest, confident that Jesus had it under control. Christ is gentle. He is lowly in heart. You will find rest for yourselves there in Christ alone and nowhere else. Don't look outside of this place. Don't look outside for answers. You will not find them. You will find more burden. 
For you and I, there could be no greater message. As his chosen children, you, you and I are healed from the sin which burdens us. That guilt is taken away. That guilt that eats at our conscience, it is removed. The anxiety that just hangs there on our shoulders and is piled up in our lap like the rocks, they are taken away. You are forgiven for your wretchedness of thought, word, and deed. You are restored back to a perfect creation in the eyes of God through what Jesus has done for you on the cross and in the empty tomb. You are welcomed into the kingdom of God. And as a follower of Jesus, you have all that the Father has promised to you in Jesus Christ. All of it. Forgiveness, life, salvation, you have rest. So go. Go, brothers and sisters. Go, fellow redeemed. Continue to be with Jesus that you might be more like Jesus. Go with your burdens and your afflictions as ones who are weak and receive the promise and the salvation that only he can bring. For it is there on the wooden beams of the cross that you have rest. It is in the words of the absolution. It is here as you kneel at the Lord's table that we come weak and weary and burdened. And we leave rejuvenated and recharged and ready to meet with great anticipation that very day when all things will be restored. When Jesus comes again and we will feast together with all God's people. The 40 days is almost over. It ends tomorrow. But don't let that be the end. Don't let that be the end of you being with Jesus. Keep being with him. Keep allowing him to be with you. Receive his gifts and rest. Rest in his eternal grace. May God grant that unto us all. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding May it guard and keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We rise for the singing of our offertory. that music was wrong, but it was. Uh, we will just say our offertory together. We all know it. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. And having given our gifts unto the Lord, really just returning but a portion of everything that he has given to us uh, for the sake of mi mission and ministry here uh, in his church, we go to God now with our stewardship liturgy. Everything we have is a gift from God. All that we have and are belong to God, bought with the blood of Jesus. Lord, help us be a people who live lives of sacrificial generosity that through our generosity, your love would be known. Keep us from the delusion of wealth and riches, and remind us that our treasure is in Christ. Increase our generosity, so that there are no needy persons among us. Grant us faithfulness in our stewardship of such a small thing as money, that Christ may trust us with true riches. Above all, let us be generous, because our Father is generous, and it is our joy to share his generous heart with the world.
Um, in our prayers for this morning, um, we will be remembering Norm Zies, um, healing for Mike Anderson, um, uh, healing for Dwayne Lancaster as he heals from surgery, uh, and also a prayer of thanksgiving as they found uh, no cancer um, on the CAT scan. Um, prayers of comfort for the family of Mike Hopp um, as uh, they mourn his death. And then finally, a prayer of healing for uh, Ralph Grable. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you ensure that the birds are fed and the lilies clothed in splendor. Deliver us from worry with the consolation that you know what we need, and that for Jesus' sake we are of much more value than they. Lord, in your mercy, kindle in us, Holy Father, the gifts of your Spirit, that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. Lord, in your mercy, Father God, fill our homes with your word and grace. Be the companion of those who are alone. Strengthen husbands and wives. Bless parents as they catechize their children. Let them all find refuge in you, and so preserve them from every plague and evil. Lord, in your mercy. Ruler of the nations, until you at last cut off the war horse and the chariot forever. Give our nation's leaders wisdom and integrity to preserve peace. Promote what is good. Defend against violence and wickedness. Lord, in your mercy. O God of mercy, you set free those imprisoned on account of their sin to bear their sentence as a joyful custody of hope. Remember those who are incarcerated, preserve them from greater evil, and foster in them repentance and trust in your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, be with all of those who are weary and heavy laden with the tribulations of this life. Give comfort especially to Norm, Mike, Dwayne, the family of Mike Hopp, Ralph, and all those who suffer illness. Console them with the knowledge that your yoke is easy and your burden is light, and that in you they will find rest for their souls. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks to you, O Lord, for all the saints who by your grace sought your kingdom and righteousness above all other treasures. We pray that you would preserve us also in repentance and Christ's righteousness until we stand before you in glory. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant to us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And together we pray the prayer that our Lord himself has taught to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save.
Um, as always, the back page of our announcements uh, will tell you things that are happening this week at St. Paul. Um, one correction, uh, there was supposed to be an elders meeting tomorrow. Um, the head elder has made an executive decision uh, that we are canceling that elders meeting. Um, so please take note of that. Um, also, um, I will not be in the office most of the week. Um, however, I will be um, somewhat available um, if you need to get a hold of me by cell phone uh, for some type of an emergency. Um, however, tomorrow you will see there is our Faith Foundations and our final Red Letter Challenge. That is happening. Um, so uh, please make sure that uh, you make note of that. Um, our Faith Foundations class, which begins tomorrow, that is for those who uh, are interested in becoming members here at St. Paul and joining the Faith family. Um, and so we would love for you to join us um, at 6 o'clock uh, starting tomorrow and then for about 5 to 6 um, following Mondays. Um, VBS is just around the corner. It's going to be here before you know it. And uh, we are very excited um, about everything that comes along with that. Um, we are still looking for empty baby jars, uh, baby food jars. We're still looking for um, toilet paper rolls. We're still looking for um, gallon ice cream jugs. So if you have any of that stuff, uh, we would love for you to bring it. Um, I have seen some people brought um, paper towel rolls. That's fine. We'll cut them up into the size that we need them so you can bring those as well. Um, Les has one um, announcement about VBS that he would like to make. Thank you, Les. That list, you can find that in the hallway, um, and that's where that is available. Yes. That's right. Uh, so please bring in your stuffed animals. We would love for you to uh, um, support our local community in that way. Um, I don't know about y'all, but I am super stoked uh, for this year's VBS. Um, I mean, I'm just rearing to go. We got some good things happening, um, some very exciting things taking place. Yes. Oh, we're good on paper towels. Okay, we're good on paper towels. The tubes, the toilet paper tubes. Okay, we're good on that. We're good on that. Thank you. But we need baby food jars. So if you haven't tried baby food in a while, uh, it's not that expensive. Uh, I mean, you can give it a shot. Uh, stop it. Is it really all plastic now? That tells you how often I buy baby food. Um, okay. Um, just a couple other announcements. One is a video. I want you to take a look at this video just for two minutes. You've got mail. That thought process was all about how do we consume as much of your time and conscious attention as possible. And that means that we need to sort of give you a little dopamine hit every once in a while. You're exploiting a vulnerability in, in human psychology. Weaponized media, that is what we are dealing with. Well, big tech is doing everything they can to overrule our self-regulation. Your brain on Minecraft looks like a brain on drugs. He says it's actually easier to treat a heroin addict than a true screen addict. It's the exact same methods of addiction that big tech is using, that the casinos have been using. The inventors, creators, understood this consciously, and we did it anyway. Remember that when the enemy comes in like a flood, 
the Spirit of the Lord shall raise up a standard against him. And remember that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yeah, we call it a smartphone. It's because the phone is smart, and we don't have to be that smart to use it. He's literally not just watching a video, but take a look. Oh, yeah, let's, let's scroll through Instagram and see, see what else is on there. A chimpanzee can use social media. I never thought I'd see the day. Well, not only is Google storing our facts for us, but they're going to start doing our thinking for us, and already have, actually. And it's dumbing us down dramatically. Are we now, in the 21st century, entering upon a new dark age? The largest and most standardized and most centralized form of attention control in history. The mass mind can be shaped now in the 21st century like never before. This is something that is programming your mind. You are not in control of your thoughts. When you are subjected to big tech's manipulation, they are doing what Edward Bernays only could have dreamed of. So there's so much hope when Jesus says, whom the Son sets free, he is free indeed. So we can be freed from the manipulation, freed from the addiction, and we can say, yes, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who liveth in me. So next Sunday, we are um, hosting Scott, um, and he is coming and presenting to us Media on the Mind, or Media on the Brain. Um, and uh, it is going to take place immediately following um, fellowship time at 11.15. He'll be for here for about 60 to 90 minutes um, to present to us. Um, it is, it's free. It doesn't cost anything. We would love for you to come, bring your, your neighbors, bring your, um, your children, grandkids, whoever um, you, would, you think would benefit from this um, because this truly is an issue that we are facing uh, today and it's not getting any better uh, and it's not going to get any better. Um, so we'd love for you to join us next Sunday, uh, which is the 16th, I believe, right? Um, the 16th um, for, uh, as we welcome Scott, um, who will share some more with us. Um, the, th the final uh, announcement for this morning is um, I need to announce to the congregation that I have received a call um, to serve as pastor at St. Mark Lutheran Church in Tonawanda, New York. Um, so what this means is that, um, I, for those of you that are not familiar with this process, it now means that I hold two calls, um, one to serve the people of St. Mark um, and the call here to continue to serve you. And so over the next three, four weeks, um, I will be prayerfully considering uh, what God is um, asking of me, what is best for his church, both here in Hubbard Lake and also in Tonawanda. So um, I covet and um, desire your prayers for myself, for my family, um, for us as a congregation, and also for the people of St. Mark. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to come and speak to me about it. I'm more than happy to um, answer any questions about the process if you're not familiar with that. Go in peace, serve the Lord. How are you?